Okay, so, so far we've created the basic physics behind our ball and we've made it so that when we pull it back um, and start to fire it, we have an arrow that kind of shows us where to go. Now, the next thing that we're going to try to emulate here from BB10 is once the balls, in this case there's balls, um, we'll get to that later, once the balls make, um, they hit other things in the scene, once they come back to the ground, as soon as that first ball hits the ground, it stops where it is, and then every other ball goes to it. So we don't have any other balls yet, but we do have that one ball. So we're going to make it so that when the ball bounces around the scene, it can bounce around the scene as much as it wants to, but then as soon as it touches the ground, it's going to stop where it is, um, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, so let's open up our Unity project here. Um, I went through and I changed the color of my ball just to make it black because I thought the blue wasn't showing up super well against the backdrop that uh, we had. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a script that we're going to attach to all of these pieces of the ground. Um, that's going to just essentially be listening for if the ball touches it. Uh, and then when the ball does touch it, we're going to have it do something to it. Before we do that though, um, we're going to talk about something called tags in Unity. So Unity, um, we've got this object, the ball. We've talked about the transform, which is its position in space. Um, the sprite renderer, I showed you that you can use this to kind of change its color. Um, we've got its circle collider, which is how it's bouncing off the things in the scene. The rigid body 2D is how it's moving. And then we created this ball controller script. What we're going to do now is we're going to talk about a couple of these things up here. So the layer is what layer the ball is on, and this does a bunch of different things, um, one of which you can use it to limit collisions. So like if you have two enemies in the scene, you want the enemies to be able to hit the player, but not each other. If you put them on the same layer or on different layers, depending on what enemies they are, you can make it so that they don't collide, so that they ignore collisions from each other using just the layers and not having to do any code. Um, we're going to use this tag. We're going to create a tag for the ball. So if we click on where it says untagged, uh, Unity has some built-in tags already. So like, for example, the main camera here has a tag of main camera. We're going to take the ball and we're going to change its tag. So we're going to add a tag and then it brings us to this tags and layer. So we have sorting layers we can look at. We have plane layers we can look at. And we're going to look at the tags right now. So I'm going to hit plus to create a new one. Then it asks me for the name, and I'm going to call this ball uppercase B ALL, and I'll save that. Now that hasn't attached it to the ball yet, so if I go over to the ball here, I can change this from being untagged, and now that ball tag is there, and I'm just going to add that tag to it, because we're going to be using that tag in just a second. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my scripts folder, I'm going to right click and choose create a new C sharp script. I'm going to call this um, I don't know, might as well call it ball stop. Um, and then I'll open this script up in mono develop. And while that's opening up, again, just remember that when you make your name of your script, make sure that you don't try to change it later. Um, it will probably just be easier to make a new script and uh, versus trying to change the name of the script after it's already made because there's a few things you have to remember to change. Uh, okay, so let's zoom in here so you guys can see this better. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're going to create a couple of references here as global variables. Remember a global variable is something that is declared outside of a method, usually at the beginning of a script. It doesn't have to be though. But it's declared outside of a method and what the global variable does is it allows any other method in that script to access those variables. Um, for this one, right now we're not going to use start and update right yet. But I'm not going to delete them yet because I don't need to yet. Uh, if we were to go further with this, we'd want to delete any update or start method we're not using uh, as kind of a way to optimize our build. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a reference to the ball's ability to move, which is its rigid body 2D. And I'm going to create a reference to the thing that is controlling the ball, which is the ball controller. And I'm going to make both of those references public. Um, you can make them private and, well, I mean, I'm not going to show you that just yet, but we will soon. If you make them private, there's a way that you can finish the reference in the start method. For now, or even in other methods. 
for now, I'm just going to make them public, and then I'll assign them in the editor. Remember, by creating these variables, you're essentially creating this empty container. So I'm going to say uh, public rigid body 2D, and I'm going to call it um, uh, just the ball. And then I'm going to create uh, public ball controller, and I'm going to call this ball control. Um, remember, these are references to methods, so they have uppercase letters to start, and these are variables, so they have lowercase letters to start. But then every uh, word that you add to it, you add it with an uppercase letter. Okay, so we're going to create a new method here. And this is a method that's going to be listening, essentially, for collisions. So um, the name of this method is something that is already prescribed by Unity, but it doesn't autocomplete in Monitor Develop. So we're going to call this uh, void uh, on collision enter 2D. And this needs to have a collider that it's colliding with. So collision 2D. And I'm just going to call this other. You'll see people online call them things like uh, call, C-O-L, as short for collision. Um, I don't like using variables that small. Um, and I just like the idea of calling it other because then you're saying, the other objects, so it's something other than what this is attached to. You don't, you know, you can call it whatever you want to. You can call it Billy Sue. Um, okay, so we're gonna say if, and this is an if statement that's checking to see if something is true. And if it's true, then it executes some code. We're gonna look to see if this other object that we're passing in, so if this object that's colliding with it, dot game object references the pieces of it. So this allows us to reference anything that's in the inspector dot tag and double equal sign here because we're checking to see if it's equal to another value. Single equals means that we're changing the value. Double equals means that we're comparing two values. And the tag that we just created for the ball is ball. So we're going to check to see if the tag of the other that intersects with our object is equal to something. And in this case, we're looking for it to be the ball. Um, and if it is the ball, then we're going to do something. If something hits this and it's not the ball, we're going to ignore it. So like particles or uh, other things, um, we'll create another another uh, part of this, another conditional statement for when the bricks get all the way down to the bottom. But we'll deal with that later. So for now, uh, if other dot game object uh, dot tag is equal to ball, then I just want to kind of talk a little bit about what we're going to do here. First thing we want to do is we want to stop the ball before it reflects. We want to rotate the ball. Uh, we want to uh, reset the level, or at least like move it one level on. So if we're on level one, move to level two, level two, move to level three. And then we also want to set the ball as active. We don't necessarily want to do this one here because in BB tan, the ball doesn't become active as soon as it hits the ground again. It doesn't become active until all of the other balls hit the ground again. And we'll we'll deal with this, we'll change this later. But for now, for our purposes, this is fine. So I used comments for all of these because I want to describe pretty thoroughly what we're going to do. So in order to stop the ball, um, we're going to need to take the uh, thing that's making the ball move, which is the rigid body, and we need to zero out its velocity. We want to make its velocity equal to zero. So how we'll do that is we're going to take our reference to the ball's rigid body, which right here is ball, and we're going to call that here. So we're going to say ball dot velocity, which is its movement speed, is equal to, and just like in ball control here, when we were setting our um, velocity, um, we need to create a new vector two that doesn't already exist in the scene. So we're going to say ball.velocity is equal to new. Actually, we don't have to do it that way. We can, um, just like over here, um, we use this vector 2.0. We can just use that instead. So we can say ball.velocity is equal to vector 2.0. We can just do that. You could, if you wanted to, um, there's another way that you can do it. You can say new vector2 and then have that vector2 just be 0, 0f, 0f. And then we're just setting it to 0. This, however, 
since the making things stop or making things have no uh, velocity is something that Unity can do a lot or might need to do a lot. The people who made it um, had this vector 2.0 function already in mind. So that's going to stop the ball. Now, um, we'll talk about this rotate the ball in a second and why that's important. The next thing we're going to do is set the ball. Actually, we don't have to do that right now. Let's just jump back to Unity just so you can see what this one thing does. Um, Okay, so we've got this ball set as tagged. I'm gonna I'm not gonna maximize this on play, but I am gonna make my play window bigger. So I'm gonna hit play. It's gonna think for a second. And as it does that, so okay, so I'll just there's our arrow from before. I'll launch it. Oop. Ah, <laughs> I forgot to attach the scripts to the ground. Okay. So I created this script, but it doesn't actually do anything unless it's attached to an object in the scene. So I'm going to take my ground, which are all of these grasses here, and you can select multiple by either holding down control or command if you're on a Mac and then selecting more. So like if you select one, if you hold down command or control, you can select multiple. Or if you want to select a range of things, if you select the first or last one you want to select and then hold down shift, you can select a range of stuff. Uh, okay, I'm going to pull this ball stop script onto it and then I need to complete these references to the, the ball and to the ball control. In both of these, I can uh, reference just by pulling the ball onto them. So, ball is the ball's rigid body 2D, and ball control is ball controller from the ball. All right, cool. So now let's play. I make a lot of mistakes. All right, so it's gonna bounce around, and it didn't stop that time. Why did it not stop? Do we have an error? No. Onclusion enter uh, game object tag ball ball dot velocity equals vector two dot zero. Yep, capital B ball. Uh, has a collider. Oh, okay. That's why, because it's not actually colliding with these objects. The way that I set it up, it's colliding with this up here. So I'm going to uh, take the ball stop script off of here. See, I told you I make a lot of mistakes. My ground holder, I'm going to, which is where my box collider 2D is. Ooh, this is a problem because it's going to be listening for that with the edge collider too. Um, okay. Let's add this here really quickly. Uh, let's make a reference to the ball. And I'm going to move this edge collider to something else. Um, all right, because if I if I play it now, <laughs> see it automatically stops because this is one of the colliders in the scene. Um, I want it to just stop when it touches the ground. So what I'm going to do, actually. <laughs> uh, I need to go back and edit this, but maybe I won't. Who knows? So I will attach this to the grass. Ball stop. And I will put the ball on both of them. Here and here. And then um, I will move this uh, box collider 2D. I'm going to copy this component. And I will paste it to just one of the pieces of grass. Paste component as new. And then I want to check to see that the, yeah, super not where I want it to be. See how it's kind of down there? That's because this, it's based on the center of the object. Um, the center of my ground object was up here. And so when I created the box collider, I moved it down here. Now that I moved the box collider onto this piece of grass, then the box collider is down and over, just like it was down and over from the empty game object I put the ground in. So I'm just going to move this. Um, I have my offset be zero, 0, but then see it doesn't cover the whole thing. See it's still here, but at least I moved it up. My x-axis, I'm going to manipulate this until it's about right. There we go. All right. So now I have my ball controller on there, and I only have the one. Um, actually, let's make sure. Yeah, I didn't take this away. I'm going to remove this component from there. 
So now this just has the edge collider, but it's not listening to see if it's intersecting with the ball. This first piece of grass has the ball collider and the uh, ball stop script. Uh, the rest of these shouldn't have the ball stop script though, because they are not actually colliding with it. Uh, okay. And because I'm going to confuse myself, I absolutely know. I'm going to rename this item to grass with collider. All right, there we go. So I'm going to hit play. Maybe I won't edit all that out. Um, okay, so I'm going to aim my ball. And there we go. It's stopping where it's supposed to. So, however, there's a problem now. First of all, it's not set to be active again. So if I go over here and I set it to can interact, there's going to be another problem. Where? Oh. No. No, it worked just fine. Okay. I guess I didn't need to do that other thing. I was thinking that if we didn't rotate it, that that arrow was going to be pointing in the wrong direction. But apparently, it's just fine. So if I... See how it kind of does a little bit of an up? Um, that's a bit of a problem because it turned the velocity to zero right away and then it still moves. Uh, we'll fix that later. All right. So now, you guys saw how I had to manually check this can interact button every time. I'm going to change that so that I do. Uh, I can set the ball as being active right away. So I'm going to do that in here, going back to my ball stop script. Um, I guess I don't need to rotate the ball, so I'll take this away. And then um, set the ball as active. I'm going to do ball control dot can interact equals true. Remember, I set it false as soon as it leaves the ground. When it touches the ground again, I'm going to set ball control dot can interact to true. So I'll save my script. I'll pop back into Unity. And now I shouldn't need to manually tick this every time. Uh, just thinking for a second. All right, and there we go. Perfect. And once we start getting stuff in the scene that it can actually interact with, this gets a lot more interesting. Uh, all right. So that was a pretty short video, but um, that's how you can make it so that your ball stops when it hits the ground. And if you uh, made any of the mistakes I did, and I especially had to move the collider because I didn't want it on the same object as that. I didn't think about that last time, but eh, oh well. Um, if you learned anything, please feel free to like, ask any questions you want to in the comments, um, and have a great day.